Hey everybody, welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. Oh, it is a beautiful, beautiful day here. Southern Ontario, gorgeous summer. And I am doing everything I can to do everything I can outside, if I possibly can. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a few seconds to join me. I I call this episode uh, "Beings of Light," what they are and how they changed things for me. So if you're if you're listening and this is your first time stumbling on this, um, this work is is from Access Consciousness and specifically from Talk to the Entities and Shannon O'Hara. And you can get so much more information about all of this on you know, the Talk to the Entities website, uh, the Access Consciousness website. Hey, Jasna, hey guys. Um, my website, just go searching for what it is that you're looking for. Um, I'm gonna do my very best in this 30 minutes to, to give you guys a sense of what this topic is for me. And then I'm gonna invite you into a deeper dive into a, um, what we're calling a book club. And if you're listening, I'm putting that in air, clo- air quotes because what it's really gonna be is a two live call deep dive into receiving in a way that you haven't ever received before. So let me back up a little bit. Hey, Sandy Lynn. So the beings of light are, now entities are, beings that don't have bodies exist. This show is not to talk much about that, but if you have any, you know, questions about that, that's where I would dive into the talk to the entities work. The thing about negating your awareness, I could probably just put a period there, but the thing about negating your awareness of any part of the spirit world is that the person who gets cut off is you. Now, last last year for me was the big like leap dive jump into the body of work called talk to the entities and so i took a bunch of classes with shannon and one of the classes that like would not leave me alone was the class called the beings of light and it was held in italy um in a stunning castle that gary and dane own with a few other people hey aaron and it and they changed my life and so Shannon has written a book about this and it's available for you to purchase. It's on Kindle, it's on Amazon. But I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what changed for me. One of the things about this topic and about what's true here is that it doesn't really have a lot of words. And when you start to talk about it, it chops up what's really true in a way that's almost, it's almost too linear. But I, I, I went into this three day class and what happened for me in that class was similar to what's happened for me in a lot of other access, primary, like key changing access classes. And I was pretty much in tears of recognition about every five minutes. And what I started to recognize is that I had always and still do have awareness of and communion with these great beings. Beings of light are all over the planet. And they're different beings in different parts of the planet. Now, they're one facet of the spirit world, but they're a huge part of the spirit world. And I don't mean that from a significant point of view. I mean, if you do not receive from and commune with these beings, you're missing out on a lot of what it is you actually came here to create. And that's what I recognized. Um, The beings of light in Italy are very different from the beings of light here, except they all sort of have the same hum. And I'm talking about this from my point of view because I want you to start to look at what this is for you. So beings of light through the years have been identified or talked about as angels, as I can't even think of other things right now, but you can sort of, you can find, you can find where they've been mentioned in movies and in literature and in the Bible. Um, for example, if you watch the movie Noah with Russell, Russell Crowe, there are these 
what they call watchers that were a part of the human society that ha there were fallen angels that had come to earth that had gotten crusted over but inside of their crust was this like like unstoppable light and you gotta watch that movie because it's really really fucking phenomenal but there is a there's a reason that I'm talking about this um, and maybe I should go into that next before I keep sharing my story um, I don't know if I've ever found a topic or a reality like this one that so quickly taps me into what's really true. When you go through the How to Become Money workbook, How to Become Money, um, it it's a phenomenal fucking tool. It's phenomenal. If you have anything going on with money or you just want to create a hundred million dollars and have it, um, that tool is like the thing to go through. The thing about the How to Become Money workbook is that over and over and over as you go through the book, you're reminded that everything that you judge about you is a lie. And the thing that's true about you is that you are power and you are awareness and you are creativity and you are money. That's what's really true about you. Hey, Suzanne. So that, I mean, and so Gary says to go through that workbook a hundred times. I've gone through it about 35, which has totally changed my financial reality, but it also, it doesn't just change your financial reality. And here's why you aren't actually broken up into parts and pieces not really it we, we we give classes on different topics right because it's a way to categorize them it's a way to put a name to them like on money on business on but the truth is that you're the source of everything that shows up in your life right so when you aren't functioning as you nothing works when you start functioning as you everything works now what's happened with a lot of spirit awareness, including the beings of light, is that we have cut off a massive part of what nourishes and nurtures our very being by not acknowledging our capacities with spirit awareness. So as I was going through this three day class and I was getting, I was, it was like I was, oh gosh, how do I describe this? It was like I was, <laughs> A, an African violet plugged into the the nurturing feeding fertilizer water that makes those plants blooms just crazy it was like that it was like being it was like being a plant just being like drenched and soaked and saturated with the nutrients that I had been missing for so long and um, when I was, I, I have a really, really interesting life story. I, I didn't grow up, a, I grew up religious, not a Christian, something else. And it was, it was a blender religion. It was like a hybrid of, you know, honestly, literally, they took some ideas and threw them in a blender. So I was like a blend of new age and um, Hinduism and Christianity. And there were, I didn't recognize it at the time, but when I look back now, there were facets of that whole thing that really struck me. And then when I was 13 to 16, no, when I was 16, I became a Christian and that's, the, but, but, here, but here's why I kind of lumped those two experiences together, is that the, there was a couple of things that stayed with me through both religions, even though the religions really didn't have anything in common. One of them was always angels. Um, I have, and, and there, I have so many things I wanna tell you. One of them was angels and one of them was Jesus. And the other was the space that got created when we would worship. So I'm sitting in this three day class in Italy and we're having these conversations about the beings of light and I am recognizing like time after time after time after time after time after time in my life that I was rescued, that I was nurtured, that I was cared for. And it was really actually less rescue, more care. Because I remember so many times in my late 20s where I was going through this Bible school down in Southern Alabama, or no, sorry, Northern Alabama. Um, and we were, we were told to like, you know, take time every day to commune with God. And I would turn the music on and I would just like be with at the time, I thought 
the beings that I made up in my head. I would, you know, because one of the things that uh, the, my coach or pastor at the time told us to do, he's like, you want to put a face on God so that he's got, you know, a personality to you. He taught us a lot of really, really cool things that were just like kind of the truth misidentified now that I know. But anyway, I would spend all this time by myself just literally like communing with all these beings because I recognize the energy. And that really sort of stayed with me into my early 30s. To give you some context, I'm 44 this year, so it's been a while. And, and so kind of, I'm gonna skip over a big chunk of time, but when I, when I found consciousness, it was the first time I had found, when I found access consciousness, it was the first time that I had found another energy that reminded me of those, those pockets of nurturing energy that I had found as a kid and growing up and into my 20s. And then, and then with the tools, I, you know, I started to get out of all my thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and I started to be a lot of space. But I remember very distinctly having a period of time where, okay, I didn't feel anything anymore, really. You know, I wasn't in any drama, and nothing really affected me. But it, there was a, it was like my, my world was colorless. It was like I was living in a black and white world. I was so used to living from the intensity of thoughts and feelings and emotions that when all of those went away, because they aren't real, they're actually not yours, and they do go away when you're willing to be space, I, I sort of felt lifeless, like, is this all there is? And so I started asking the universe to show me, like, the intensity of being and stuff like that. But when I, when I started with the entity conversations, and most especially with the beings of light, I started to recognize that life-giving, nurturing, saturating um, energy again that I had had throughout my entire life in different ways. And I don't actually get that I could go through the rest of my life without that. One of the questions that Gary gives us in the bars manual the very first class ever we ever take in access is i'm going to probably butcher it a little bit but it's basically like what can i add to my life what can i be do have create or generate that would make and create something like this that would make life worth living and it, it's create life worth living because it's not just for you it's actually like creating a life worth living and when I started asking that, I started asking it a lot. I'm like, what would create life worth living? Not just for me, but for everyone. So again, you fast forward to last summer when I took this class and I'm like, this, like this communion with these beings, that's life worth living. Now there's, there's so much about this topic that you can't cover in a 30 minute show, you know, because really what we're talking about here is an exploration for yourself of what this universe is for you. Um, I'm having a big deja vu right now. <laughs> One of the things that happens when you cut yourself off from what you are, and we do this in a lot of different ways. We cut ourselves off from what we are in the healing department, from what we are as money, from what we are with business, from what we are, but we also very dynamically cut ourselves off from what we are and can be with the spirit world and and you know there's been so much bastardization of this in all over like I could tell you so many stories from the bastardization from the religious stuff that I was in right so religions bastardized this stuff uh, metaphysical people have bastardized a lot of this stuff sorry guys um, new age um, gosh even people today that are like well I'm not religious but I'm spiritual nobody really knows what that means right so it's, it, there's just been a lot of misidentification of this stuff. So it's really required that you go on your own journey. And that's one of the things I'm so grateful to Shannon for is like, she is fierce about forcing us to look at how powerful we really are, like how aware we really are, how much we can actually trust ourselves. And that's the thing about having a beings of light conversation is like, you have to be willing to begin to engage in a journey, in a conversation with yourself that's different. Beings without bodies do not communicate with English. <laughs> and so to receive everything that is possible, all the care and the nurturing and the, sus the sustaining that's there for you, you have to be willing to tap in with 
senses other than your sight and your your fingers and your your taste and your touch and all that you have to be willing to use like your knowing and your receiving and your perceiving so but what, what I, I think the thing I really want you guys to start to look at or and if you may have done this already because the book's been out for a little while is when and where and, and have you always known about this Have you always known? Is there anywhere that you cut off what and that you know? And you cut off your abilities with this in favor of, I have no idea, being cool. I mean, I did it. You know, I wanted to be cool. I wanted to be conscious. Those are all judgments, by the way. Um, <laughs> but I did it. You know, I wanted to be like everybody else. And, and as I was discovering this whole universe of energies and presence with these beings, I realized I'm so not like everybody else. I am so much softer, so much mel melty, so much more aware of these beings. I always have been. Um, I'm so different. And that right there is true for all of you. We're, we are all different, totally different from the rest of each other. And it really, I, I left that conversation in that class, not just even okay with that difference, but like being it. And, and I've been, I've been really searching for most of my life, you know, how to be myself, right? It's like, and, and I posted a meme on Facebook today. It's like, don't, don't go find your reality, be it. I've been trying to find my reality for most of my life. You know, maybe I can be with the right person where I get to be my reality or, and I didn't have actually be my reality. You know, if I get with the right person or if I'm in the right relationship or I leave my family behind enough because they're blah, 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 blah. If I, you know, work a different job, it's like if I change my outside circumstances, then maybe I can be myself, you know? And I searched from there for a long time, you know, even into my access journey. But what this gave me access to is being me right in the middle of everything. Every point of view, every other energy, every other, everything I have access to and can tap into this world that, that is also mine, that I am a part of. And it's so different than what anything out in the world tells you. It's not about it's so different. It's the same sort of thing how where you or and your friend can sit in the middle of a sunny field and have totally, totally different experiences. These beings and these entities and your team are all around you and one person, one of you is going to have a blissful communion and conversation and receive and be totally changed by it and the person right beside you will be exactly the same. So my question for you is like, what would you be have to, what could you be willing to receive? What could you begin to really explore? I'll start to wrap up with this story. So I have a really good friend who, who's known me. We actually met like five months before I found Access Consciousness. So she's and I was in a huge transition. I, she met me like right before I left my second marriage. She's been a huge support for me. And then I found Access Consciousness and like streamlined myself to becoming a certified facilitator. So I was like all about these tools all the time. And um, so she really contributed to me and then I ended up really contributing to her with my journey and my change and all these tools. She, my friend, has an incredible capacity with the earth and with entities. She also deals with a lot, a lot of body pain. And what's starting to show up in our conversations and with her, and what I'm really starting to get, is that if you want a different reality with physical intensity, with money, whatever, you can apply that with anything, you cannot just use the tools of consciousness like feel better pills. And I see a lot of us doing that with the entity tools in particular. It's like, well, you know, we talk about how entity tools, there's the clearing, clearing tools. Everybody knows the clearing tools. If you don't, you need to take a class. They'll change your life. 
there's the receiving, and there's the communicating. Most people will stop at clearing, and it's to get rid of them. It's like, I don't want to be aware of ghosts, so I clear them. And that's like using the tools of consciousness to like feel better for a minute. It's like taking two Advil. It, it, it works. It does work, by the way. It does work. It'll, it'll change things. It'll change things. Does it, however, give you access to the depth of what you are? And so I've had some conversations with my friend lately. Um, the pain is intensifying. And here's the thing. Pain is a power you're avoiding. That's all. And we're not saying what power. We're not saying how you're avoiding it. But that every pain is a power you're avoiding. Now here's another thing. Beings, entities communicate through physical intensity when they can't get your attention with a whisper. And most of us have like numbed ourselves so dynamically to the whispers of awareness um, that it takes gigantic amounts of pain to even get our attention. And thank God for pain, honestly, because I can tell you so many stories about pain that got me to the next point. Like, you know, whatever it takes, really, thank God for pain. But she's at this point now where she's used the tools sort of like an Advil. And now, if she really wants to change this, she's going to have to dive deep into the depths of what she is. Now, what do I mean by that? We are all something. Now, I hear a lot of people talking about capacities, like I have this capacity, almost like they have a handbag. I've got this, I've got this capacity, and it's like they're carrying it around and like wearing it like a shirt. But the truth about capacities is that it's something you are. I have the capacity for sight is weird to say that. I can see. I perceive. I know. It's what I am. With this other stuff though, we talk about it like it's something we've got. So I have these tools to clear entities is different than I commune with spirits. It's what I am. So when you don't claim what you are, I'll give you another example. Um, when you don't, well, I'll finish my sentence first. That's really hard these days. When you don't claim what you are, you hurt. That's all. And you hurt in various ways. Like, if you don't claim that you don't just have awareness, but that you are aware, then you're always going to be at the effect of everything that you're aware of, right? You'll forget to ask, who does this even belong to? Because you think it's something that's sort of happening to you. No, no, it's what you are. You're aware. And so therefore you will be aware of fill in the blank, everything. So what are you that you've been refusing that you truly could be choosing to discover, dive into and receive that would change your whole reality. And everything that doesn't allow that times a gazillion to show up, will you destroy it and create it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Again, that statement is the clearing statement and you can go to the clearingstatement.com if you need more info. So, so as I've really, really played with and, and had so many different classes and conversations around this talk to the entities stuff, I've gotten it. I've like, okay, this is a what I am. I, if, if I continue to like not do office hours every day, for example, that's one of the things that we talk about with entities is like set up a time, 20 minutes, five minutes a day where you are literally putting your attention on the entities trying to get your attention and be with them, receive, communicate, clear, right? If you don't choose that and you are this thing, then guess what's going to be a backlog? All the things trying to get your attention. So... The shortcut to ease for you, I wonder what that is. But I know that it's, it starts with beginning to claim what's really true for you, who you really can hear, what you are really aware of. 
you know, for my friend with all the, the body pain, she's got a journey ahead of her. You know, um, I know for me, I get these crazy headaches and I've gotten the awareness recently that it's inculcated entities. So now I have the information. But what's ahead of me is that the next time I get a headache, the willingness to stay with that until the energy changes. Or I could take some drugs and just, you know, pretend it's just not there. Um, or I could choose something different. I could actually let it facilitate me into more of me, more awareness, more possibility, more capacity with this thing that I am. So I really want to invite you to what we're going to call the book club of beings of light. It's above my head. You're invited. It's two calls. And um, more than that, I mean, I want you with me. I also really want you with you, for you. And I wonder what conversation will lead you there in a way that you didn't expect. I wonder what these beings are willing to gift you that you could receive that would change your whole reality with everything. So check it out on Kindle and Amazon Beings of Light by Shannon O'Hara. Come to my book club if that's something you know will create more for you. And otherwise, I'll see you guys next week.